If a visitor comes to RMK, they will see something that uh, is hard to imagine um, actually operating because it's got so many different facets. Unless you know how to put all that together, it's difficult to even understand what you've got. But if you have that experience, you can look at something and it might be overgrown, it might be rusty. If you understand what's underneath it, then you can make a judgment. So we don't see something as a pile of rust or a, a, a pile of rocks. We see them as, as opportunities, real opportunities. Great to have your own airfield. Eh? A real luxury to land within five minutes of the mine site. For me, it's a great project because it really fits in with our business plan. It allows us to have a fast development phase. We can get this one up and running very quickly. The work's been done, it's been done beautifully. You, the facilities are great, the infrastructure's there. It's a real opportunity for us. The new concept here is that we want to repeat what we've done at KBK with Mira, where we put all the facilities in one place so we don't have to transport people. So we've got to replace the canteen that was burnt down but we also would like to bring an administration, a new core shed, geology and mining building. This is the clinic. It's operated by um, SOS, at least it was, and we'll probably get SOS back in again. The nursery is an integral part of the mining operation. You make sure that reclamation is done properly so that when a mining operation closes, the land is put back to pretty well as it was originally. Behind me is the IMK processing plant, designed in mid-90s by BHP Engineering. This plant has been here for 20 years now. It's a very solid plant, but there is new technology which has been available in more recent years which we think we can incorporate to improve the process and give better efficiency. It's a good crusher. But it's a good mill, very good mill, top class. But there's so much we can improve, you know, look at that monstrosity there. You know, even the operators take one look at it and shake their head. And that's what happens when you allow people that are not involved in design to do something. And we're just going to cut the whole thing out. We'll just take it all out and start again. To most mining people, this would be a, a real Aladdin's cave. These containers are an overflow area for the warehouse and they're actually full of very expensive equipment, full of spare parts that really we know we'd normally have to spend millions of dollars on, but it's still there, sitting there. So you see that as an opportunity, you know, that's value to the whole project. Well, I think the main thing was just trying to get a grasp of, you know, what parts of the puzzle and, and what parts of the process that we're actually going to use and seeing that there is actually a lot of equipment that's in good condition. I feel a lot more confident now that I've had a second day walking through the plant. Because I'm always very optimistic about what I'm doing, I look at the positive side, so it's just really how to get the best out of it. And we've got a good basis here, it's good. It's a good start, so it's very, very positive. We believe there's enough reserve in this one pit to justify us taking on this project. 
This is Serigen Pit, and you can see it's been gradually filling up with water. It's probably at the overflow level now, so as deep as it will get. The rest of the ore is actually under the water, so we'll have to dewater this pit, get back to the original level, then we can start mining ore from here. We have a lot of illegal miners in the IMK concession. They've increased over the last couple of years because after the mine shut down, the area became depressed and it was one of the only ways that people could actually make money. This is the north end of the pit and you can just see in the distance the illegal miners. Beyond the illegal miners is the so-called sacred hill that we are not allowed to mine too close to. Where the illegal miners are, that's some quite good ore we'd like to be mining. Because the ore is, uh, is pretty heavy for them to bring out from here, there, it looks as though they're using some sort of raft, take the ore down to the other end of the pit where the road is lower and they can take it out from there. Several of these people are actually ex-employees of IMK, so we don't believe there's going to be a great big effort to actually get to move them because we'll actually we'll re-employ them. The original project started by Aurora incorporated a tailings dam which was set in a valley and they had to build a very substantial wall to hold back the tailings and over the years this wall has been built up to 30-40 meters high now. There's up to 8 million tons worth of tailings. A lot of the time tailings are overlooked as being uneconomic because of the low grades, but people forget that the actual cost of processing this is very low, so the economics are usually quite positive. The tailings material is quite clean, there's got no contaminants in there. They could stay here forever, so there's no problem environmentally. Um, it's just that there is more value that we can get from the tailings um, by reprocessing. So why not? The real achievement is to put it all together. These gold mining projects are very complicated and they've got so many different facets to them. But if you can put it all together as a package that just works nice and smoothly, that's when you get the, the most satisfaction out of it. We're introducing new technology. We're introducing different concepts that we know will improve the whole operation. My enthusiasm comes from the fact that I think we can actually do this project very well and make a sustainable business which will benefit the region. This is a, a very good opportunity for us. From a timing point of view, from a development of our business, it's a, an excellent opportunity, which we shouldn't miss. happens when you try hanging upside down in your boots. <laughs> what's, what's down here? Just um, Is this where you grow the marijuana? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like um, I'm one of those lost African tribes that walk around saying we're the Fakawi. <laughs>